Hi, it's Mr. Baumgarten here, and we're going to have some fun with this video. We are going to create silly little images. Uh, so this is the end product that I've ended up with, and rather than going through and typing it up and showing you line by line, I thought I'd pre-create it, and I'll explain all the different lines of code that I've used to create it. Uh, so that you can then have a go at experimenting and coming up with your own wonderful creation. You can do something like this, you can do a landscape, you can uh, stick your head poking out of the window of a car or on a plane or whatever. But uh, stick your head shot into some kind of drawing and uh, impress us with your creativity. All right, this is what my code looks like to create this. So first, a couple of little websites that uh, I'm going to point out to you. So if I just bring across, in terms of picking the colors, all right, just Google uh, the phrase color picker, and Google will automatically give you a color picker. Uh, so if I want red or orange or yellow or green, all right, you just find the color that you want, and then this is the code here that you want to use in your code whenever it needs a color. So I'm just going to copy that. All right, and if I put that here in Mu, instead of all these zeros that represent the black, you only want one hashtag symbol though. All right, if I put that everywhere, I'll put it on those ones. All right, I've just created my body to be that deep purple color. Uh, let's give my fists a different color, shall we? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, let's go some kind of orangey thing here on my fists. Back to the moo, out of these last two that were here. Anyway, you get the idea. So picking your colors is nice and straightforward. The other thing that I wanted to show you, to do this drawing, uh, it can look intimidating because there's a whole pile of numbers here on the code. Uh, most of these numbers equate to coordinates within my picture. So I highly recommend that you get yourself a piece of graph paper and draw what you want on paper first. Now, if you don't happen to have some paper with you at home, it just so happens that if you search grid paper online, the very first link that I found is fantastic, actually. It's a really cool little tool. You can just draw and figure out, okay, this is going to look, you know, a small square is, going to, every small square might be 10 pixels or every small square might be 20 pixels. And so then you just need to count your squares and figure out your coordinates that way. Um, so if I wanted to create perhaps a, um, well, how about I quickly go through this code and I'll explain the different commands. So first of all, you will note, and then I'll create another image live. How's that? So update your Python import. We've got import image, in image draw and image font, right? Because we want the drawing tools and we want the writing tools. I've imported in my headshot. And the very first thing I did was resize my headshot to be 100 by 150 pixels. I wanted it to be nice round numbers. But uh, again, I had to experiment with it a little bit so it didn't look stretched. So, you know, I just did headshot show and kept adjusting the numbers until I got what I wanted. Then I have created a, 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 uh, a new blank image, which I just called canvas because I'm going to be artistic and, and paint on it. And then you need to create another variable called drawing. And this is the one that will enable all the different drawing commands for you. And I'm gonna, this drawing uh, variable or object is going to be linked to my canvas. So whatever I do with drawing will automatically appear on my canvas. Then I've got a bunch of drawing.rectangle, drawing.line and drawing.ellipse. So ellipse being a fancy word for circle. 
Now the ellipses and the rectangles are actually fairly similar, so I'm going to group them together. Uh, because the four numbers work the same for the rectangles and the ellipses. Don't worry about the minuses and the pluses and all that. That's just me getting Python to do the mental math because I, I've, I knew where I wanted my center points to be and so then I decided, okay, come in from AT or add AT, go right to, from AT and whatever. But if you're using the graph paper, then you won't need to do all that. The four numbers that are inside, so two sets of parentheses, then four numbers and then close one parentheses and then we give it the color code and then the close. And the four numbers are to represent the, the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. So the same as we were using with the crop command. So you can see here, I've got a canvas that was 500 by 500 pixels. So that's the total size of my image. And I'm drawing a rectangle from the zero, coming in the zero from the left, coming down uh, zero from the top, so the top left corner, and then the right edge will be 500 from the left, so all the way to the right, and the bottom edge will be 500 from the top, so all the way down to the bottom. All right, so just to give you an example of something that doesn't fill up the entire thing, I could come in 50 from the left, 100 from the top, uh, but if I want this to be a perfect square, then of say 200 by 200, then it's going to be 250 and 300 will be the stopping points for that because I need to add the 200 to the 50 and I need to add 200 to the 100. And so if I just make this say red so it really stands out, let's see what I mean. All right, there's a red square that is 200 by 200. But it's come in 50 from the left and come down 100 from the top. Uh, and the numbers for the ellipses are the same because an ellipse is basically you're drawing an invisible rectangle and the, corner, the edges of the circles will touch the four sides of, this, of that rectangle. Uh, so it, you can use it to make a stretched, uh, hence why it's an ellipse rather than circle. Um, and then yeah, I can fix up the, same, the other one. For the line command, it's slightly different. The four numbers represent um, the x and y coordinate of the starting point of the line, and then the x and y coordinate of the finishing point of the line. Uh, so that will allow you to get like diagonal lines and stuff like that. So line works slightly different to rectangle and ellipse. Um, left, top, right, bottom for a rectangle ellipse. X and Y, X and Y for your lines. Then for the drawing of the writing of the text, uh, I've got my font name here. So any TTF font will work. You can go to Google uh, fonts.google.com download your own font put it into your project folder and as long as you get the file name a perfect match you can use that as well and then this is the coordinate location for the top left corner of where I want my writing to appear and then the color of it and then this so set the font to this font variable here uh, so I could just, for instance, call that Arial. If I want to have multiple fonts loaded up into the system, I could. And then here I'm saying, okay, use my Arial font. And then finally, I'm pasting my headshot in. At two, 200 from the left, zero from the top is where the top left corner of that will go. And there's my image. Right. If you are confident with that, go for it. I did say that I was going to quickly draw one from scratch myself. So not aerodynamic, we correct, but anyway. And then I'm gonna stick my head here. You reckon I can get this to work? All right. Let's figure this out. I'm going to create a second drawing for this. 
plane. Uh, and so I'll keep my headshot code, but I'll come back to it later. I thought I might just start recording again, but I'll speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I'll take that. All right, ladies and gents, see what you come up with. This is Mr. Bond Garden signing out.